Right, they've had a chance to soak. <coughs> I've finished my brew. I've had a vape. I'm going to have another. And we'll start on these uh, rear caliper. So basically, it is the exact same as the front. Get some brake fluid and just lube the inside of each section. And then just start to assemble. Get the thick one first and start to assemble. The seals assemble, start to fit the seals back in place. I know I'm blocking your view there by turning that the wrong way, but thankfully that one's just gone straight in. No issues with that one. In fact, what I'll do with this one, I'll start it backwards so when I turn the other way, you can maybe see. So Start pushing it down, and as you get down towards the end, that, that's uh, gone straight in as well. That's handy. And just make sure they're in properly and give them a coat. There's fluid in the bottom here that I've drained when I've then get the thin one. I'll do the same again, I'll start starting the back side edge sort of thing. <coughs> and just start feeding it in. Now remember what I said about these thin ones that are a pain in the ass, but they will go eventually. So just steady away. And that one's gone in nicely. Just make sure it's all the way in. Grab another one. gone down the way this time. It's a bit rough then, pulled it back out. Just, it's been a bit of an ass, just go around and make sure whether it's it's all the way in, which it actually pulls it so there's less sticking out if you know what I mean, but because of the gap that's that's got to go in, so it sinks back into the groove. Gently, gently does it, and that's in. Give them a coat. Grab a pair of pistons. Well, one at a time, obviously. as level as you can and then start feeding her in and if it won't go just pull it back out have a look and make sure you're keeping it sort of as level as you can be and once it gets past the second seal it just goes in nice and smooth grab the second piston And 
your starter in. That one's gone in a bit jelly wog, so I'll just pull that out and just make sure I haven't start again. That's better. As you say, once you get it past the second seal, it just suddenly just goes. So that's that half done. I'll just stick that to one side, bring the other bit in, lube it up inside. It doesn't matter if you get any fluid on this bit here because before I put pads and stuff in I'll be cleaning it. Right, start with the thicken again. Same as before, thickens first. So in she goes. Get it so it sits into the slot, into the groove. eBay let me know of uh, some that's worth looking at that I've never looked at before. That one went straight in again. Get the second thick one. That one's gone in as well. They aren't hard to do, these. It's just, you've got to take your time. Don't rush them. It's pointless rushing it just to fuck it up. So just go steady. I mean, I fucking wouldn't like to see how many of these I've done over the years. But what I can say is the first one I ever did I actually knackered one of the seals by trying to rush <coughs> so even though I didn't, you know, it's not the end of the world I just had to buy another seal kit but uh, if I just took my time I wouldn't have to that was on one of my own bikes as well by the way That's that in. So that's the, all the seals. The big van just pulled up outside. It could be something for me, seeing as I've ordered a pile of gear. Right, it looks like it is. I'll just knock you off for a minute while I get this delivery and I'll be back in a sec. Ah, back again. Uh, right, where was I? This next. That's that. So next, it's the same as the front one. It's the two transfer holes. So I'll find the little, the little uh, seals. Got them both out here. Put them in place. They actually fit into the recess, but they're not just a loose fit. You've got to force them in. Well, not force them in, but push them so they fit into the recess properly. And for some reason, that one's not going in. That's it. 
and then exactly the same Let's get some of this shit off my fingers but this time because of the way the rear caliper mounts all three bolts go in so we'll get me so it's the same thing as before just look through the holes to line them up don't put it on like all skew whiff and then try and pull it in because you'll pull these little seals off and that's not what you want to do so lower it on get it so that the it actually starts I'll just lift that off a sec then get the other bolts Don't take them down tight, just take them down just, just so everything's contacting. You can actually lift the caliper up because it's this weight, the weight of it will be pulling the caliper down at an angle. Just get it so it's just to say touching, no pressure on at all, and then do your alignment on your caliper, make sure it's all nice and the joints are smooth and not like just slightly out because it uh, one it looks shit but two it, it could possibly affect the way it works and then just nip it down and then just have a feel make sure everything feels right and again that's that caliper back together I need to torque these up yet and the same on the front one and they, the torque figure for them if I remember rightly is in between 38 newton meters and 52 newton meters so as a rule of thumb I tend to go to like 45 because that's plenty enough with torque on them sort of bolts so I'll get uh, what I'll do is I'll knock you off I'll uh, get a clean bit of rag and I'll give these a wipe over to get the fluid off the outside edges and on, on the insides. Um, I'll get me, me adapter and my torque wrench and we'll get these torqued down and then after that we'll put pads in. So, right, back in a couple of minutes. Right, got me torque, torque wrench set up and everything. But in my haste, while I was cleaning these, I realised I'd missed some of it. As I say, in my haste to get the two halves together, I forgot to put the, the spring clip in. So basically, I'll just undo these. On each caliper as well, I can't believe that I've... I mean, the amount of these that I've done, I can't believe that I actually forgot to fucking do this. Just carefully lift the top off, make sure that your, your seals have stayed in place. Lift these out because I need to turn this over. Right, basically, what I've missed off is the, the spring, sort of spring clip thing that goes on. And it just clips into place in there. Same on both of them, I've got this one to take in half as well and do it. And then you line them up and put them together. Impatience, that's what's screwed up there. Too much of a fucking rush. Without that in, your pads would probably rattle like fuck, which is what you don't want. So I'll just line all this up again. 
make sure it's all nice and smooth. And then just nip it down. Give it another check. Spot on. And then just same thing, just whip these ones back out. Thankfully I hadn't uh, got as far as putting the... Right, so same thing, just sits onto that, that bit there, pushes down and then slips into place. And then put them back together again. Yeah, I'm glad I hadn't uh, tightened everything down and was just trying to put the, cali uh, the pads in before I realised, because that would have been a bit of a pain in the ass. And because I'd only put these, like, just nipped them, I hadn't actually squashed the, the seals properly. So they're still going to be, like, brand new. As I say, just line everything up. Put that one in to make sure it goes in there. Uh, the thread still, and then just nip them down. To the field, yep, spot on. Right, and now I can talk them up. So I've set these to 45. These can be a bit of a pain in the ass to hold by hand. You're meant to do these when you put them back on like the fork leg or the swing arm. Oh, I can't remember what position I had. Sure I had it. That's it. Just have gone the other way. So I'll just find a glove. Right, let's try again. I'm just slipping and sliding on this. Never to worry. They are quite tight, but they're not torqued up properly yet. This one should be a bit easier, because I've got something to fucking hold on to. So I'll do the middle one first.
So they're, <coughs> they're talked up on the rear caliper. I just need something that I can put in without damaging uh, the threads on the new. I might just use these old bolts actually. Take these out. Factor for the same thread. I might use these scabby. Now I should hopefully be able to put that in there, which will give me the leverage I need. Hopefully. I mean a vice would be would be better. Clamp it in a vice. But I don't like clamping chrome stuff in a vice. And now that's that one uh, torqued up. So I'll just take them back out of there. And what we'll quickly do now is just fit the uh, brake pads in. Take the torque off this. Never leave a torque wrench under pressure. Fucks the springs inside them. Right, so I'll do this one first. Grab a pair of pads and rip the if you haven't got a manual um do a little bit of an extra clamp on that. Yeah, if you haven't got a manual, um, just when you take brake pads out, look at where they came from because they're not symmetrical. They're not like identical pads on on the inside and the outside. So, if you haven't if you haven't got pads in, basically, the pad that's got the square nub on the end. That goes on the outboard side, like on the on that side. So just sit and get it the right way up helps as well. So just sit that in place. And then the one with the two spiky bits on, nipples if that's what you want to call them, that goes on the, the inboard side. So then holding them. I've then got to feed through one of the pad retaining pins. Right, I've been having a look at the caliper. I just had a horrible thought. I'd put this fucking spring thing in wrong in the bottom. <coughs> While I was looking, it suddenly dawned on me this is the front caliper, not the rear. On the front caliper, where I was saying that one with the square bit goes on the outboard side, like on that side, on the front caliper that goes on the inside. The one with the two points on goes on the outside. Which would explain why it wasn't wanting to fucking line up properly. On the rear caliper, it's the opposite to what it is on the front. So, if you put them in, it even fucking sits nicer. 
I should be able to push down with that. Oh, look how easy that fucking was. What the fuck have I done with the other one? Right, so. And then, while well, before I push it right through, if I press down, which presses it on the spring, I can push the rear ones in. So, get that screwed in, and then get that one screwed in. There is a torque setting for these, just off the top of my head, I can't remember what it is. I, usually, I don't usually torque them to be fair, I usually just tighten them up. You know, nip them up I mean, don't, don't like go over the top. You know, you're probably talking like minimum maybe 20 newton metres, if that. But uh, I just nip them up, not nip them up like that tight, but I'll get the, the ratchet on it in a minute. Uh, screwdriver in which will enable us to pull the, the pads. I'm not touching the pad material here, I'm just pushing it against the tags which is what I was trying to do before and it wouldn't go on, it was because the fucking pads were in the wrong way around. Numb nuts. So, that's your calipers installed. Sorry, your brake pads installed. So I'll just get my little, my little ratchet. And as I say, I just, just nip them up. I don't over tighten them, they don't need to be over tightened. You know, it's fucking hard enough getting them out sometimes when they've been in a while without over tightening them to start with. So, the next thing I'm going to do with this is get me uh, the bleed nipple, and I'm just going to put a tiny bit of fluid on the thread. Now, I've always found in the past, the little bit of fluid on the threads just helps the, so it doesn't seize. I know it's not an anti-seize compound, but it just sort of puts a bit of a lube in the thread. And as I haven't got me my, uh, my three-eighths spanner handy, I don't think. I'm just going to put it in finger tight because whoever gets these will have to bleed them up anyways. And uh, I've just, anybody who saw that, this is how my fucking brain's not working at the minute. I've just put this in where the banjo bolt goes. I wonder why it was screwing in so far. Bleed nipple goes in the other hole. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't go in there. The banjo bolt goes in that one. So I'll just nip that up finger tight. And then I've got the little cap that goes on top of the nipple, and basically that's that caliper. Put the bolts back in for the forks. And that's that caliper. Still a good caliper, it's got a couple of bits where the chrome's not a hundred percent on the inside where you can't fucking see it anyways when it's on the bike but it's still a good a good clean chrome caliper which would make a big difference to someone who's got a you know maybe an old scabby black one that's gone that's gone horrible or even a fucking chrome one that's completely decided to piss its chrome off but that's it tidy someone's bike up so that's that one done so the rear one, this is the outside and it's this side that the square tab goes. Not, not like I tried to do it on the front one, get them the wrong way around. Yeah I couldn't figure that out further, what the fuck's going on here? Why won't it go in? Well not so much why won't it go in, why won't it move? It didn't look right. So get these pads out again. Exactly the same really as the front apart from the tabs are the opposite way around. So the one with the square tab this time does go to the outside edge and the two pointy tabs go on the inside. 
and then it's the exact let me find them there they are the exact same thing push down get them lined up properly push down and they, it goes through that one slipped and then grab the other one Oop. bit more awkward to hold push, push the pads down I don't know if you'll be able to show but when you get it up against the spring when you push you can see it's just a little bit of movement if I put the fuckers in the camera so you can see it you can see there's a little bit of movement and that little bit of movement allows you to push the uh, the pad retaining pin in and then get the little, little socket on the job and screw it in Same on this one. And I might as well nip them down now while I'm at it. as much as it needs. That's it. It won't come out. But again I'll go in with my screwdriver and as I said before I'm not putting it in the material. I'm putting it down into where the tabs are and just pulling them back to the other side of the caliper. Just so they're sitting straight. That's it. And there you go. That's the new pads in the caliper. So, same again as I did on the other. Except this time I'll put it in the right hole. Bleed nipple. Just touch a brake fluid on just to lube these threads and then screw it into the correct hole that's for the bleed nipple. Just nip it up finger tight, put the little cap on, job done. So that is your front and rear calipers rebuilt with new seals, new pads. Um, I'll give them a proper clean up as well. Um, get some chrome cleaner on the job and get, get rid of any traces of the brake fluid that was still on it and uh, get them sold so I think that's that's it as far as calipers go as I say I've the the rear caliper on the deuce is fine and since I've sorted the the master cylinder out off the rear that's fine working spot on so I think the next thing is I'm going to do the uh, the swing arm bushes on the Electroglide and then wheel alignment etc. And uh, then we'll see how it goes and what's coming next. Right, that's it for now. Catch you next time.